Hi, the Astro 30 here. So, you've broken them. What can you do with broken multimeter probes? Just throw them away. No, don't throw them away. I've actually got a great idea of what you can do with multimeter probes if, say, the probe end is broken off, but your banana connections are still fine and functioning and can still plug into the meter. We can modify these to use them for another purpose. Let's get to it. So I don't know how in the hell this happened, but this lead has actually been severed from the cable, like literally severed. And this probe is also bent and I don't know how that happened. It was sitting in a box in the corner of the room there and it did have the O1 uh, meter sitting on top of it and these were wrapped around the body of the uh, Mustool multimeter but I don't know how it managed to do that and how this actually came completely severed. So what you can do is take a set of these alligator clips and join it to the leads where the probes go. Because there are certain situations when you're measuring something where you need to clip your multimeter using alligator clips to a certain circuit to measure a voltage so your hands are free. Well, why not just make a set of multimeter leads that already have the clips on it? Saves using alligator clip leads, just saying. So that's what we're gonna to do today. I'm going to somehow get these shielded uh, insulation parts over the cable because it is pretty thick. I reckon it might stretch enough but we'll soon find out as we're going. So here's the multimeter with the broken probes. Um, I went to JCAR and I did buy some Cat3 rated test lead set. It's about 14 bucks and these are rated at 10 amps and the only thing about them is they're not right angled, they're straight. So uh, they did have a $24 set that had the right angle on it, and they were Cat 4 rated. But Category 3 was what the original multimeter leads were, and that's what I'm going to be using. And for those playing along at home, the probes are a ProTech JCAR catalog WT5333. Made in China, of course. And these should be standard fit, there shouldn't be any different type of connection here. Should fit just, whoops, there goes the soldering iron, just fit just fine. So, however, they are shorter, they're only about 600 millimeters long, but these come off, and you can lose them if you want. Standard banana plugs, even though it's, it's, it's actually quite an interesting design, they're actually insulated on the very tips. See, they've actually got plastic insulation on the tips there and the actual banana connection is further down the shank. Comparing it to the old one, they're slightly longer, but they that shouldn't really be an issue, I wouldn't have thought. No, it's not. It plugs in just fine. The only annoying part is they stick out like dog's balls, but that's what happens when you break things. So we'll just test that these leads work. Indeed, they work. We'll put that on uh, no, no. Right, continuity. Beautiful. Now these bits do actually come off to reveal longer probes. Now the reason they do that is if you're going to be doing high voltage testing in high voltage circuits that these help insulate the probe, especially if you're holding it like that, which you should never ever do, especially around high voltage valve circuits. Ask me how I know. Um, anyway, so now we're going to get into repurposing our old leads, now that I've verified the new leads are fine, and we'll uh, go from there. All right, so before I cut this probe off and shoot myself in the foot, I'm going to see how easy it is to get this rubber condom 
of this alligator clip onto the lead. So I'll take the alligator clip out of said condom. I'll move the negative probe or common probe out the way. Uh, oh, I reckon it'll just fit. That fits just nicely. I mean, you can use a bit of spit or something or a little bit of oil just to help it slip on easy. But no, that's great. That means I can cut the other probe off just fine. So I will take a knife and I'll strip back a bit of this insulation so I can get to the wire underneath. Like so. It's only a very thin, very thin copper wire there. I poke that through the little hole in the alligator clip and we put it into the clamp. Now I've got to pre-crimp that before I solder. Some may argue that you should really pre-tin the wire first. Others argue just put it through the hole and tin and solder it at the same time. In some cases it's okay to pre-tin the wire. I need a proper crimping tool for this. Pliers are a pain in the ass, but I think that's all I'm going to get. Right, so I've got the pliers to hold it. it took me a while to get it because the uh, thing kept moving on me. And my iron's currently set to 380, which should be plenty for this. Not that I can really see very well. Let me just move this light a little bit closer so I can shine some light on the surface, on the subject, rather. So I'll use the pliers to hold the wire still for me whilst I solder it and that should be well enough done I shouldn't have to do any more to that than that we end up with a soldered probe so how lovely is that now that this insulation's heated up a bit I will redo the crimp as best as I can yeah that'll do it it's still going to be quite hot. Now I can put the rubber condom, if I so can, back over the clip, which it doesn't really want to slide all that easy. So let's try a bit of spit. That might lubricate things enough. Yes, it does. It may sound dirty to you, but if you if you're the only one using these leads you can always sanitize them if you want it's not a great big problem but that made it slide that much easier next time you could probably just use a bit of WD-40 but that'll be fine I've got some of this rubbing alcohol antiseptic anyway gravity just spray it over that actually that probably would help lubricate it too and that's just gone in a cut on my finger. Ow, you mother f Oh, you f That stings. Oh, you bastard. See, I've got a cut right there. Ooh. Right, that's one lead done. Now, we have to do the negative lead the same way. However, some may argue, why don't you just straighten that? Yeah, but... Yeah. So I'm going to make these the same length by severing the connection right at the probe. Bye bye. And I'll grab my negative lead. I might spray some of this antiseptic on here after I take that off. Just to see if it helps it slide a bit better. Might make things a little bit easy because it's slippery. Whew, that stuff stinks. Okay. <coughs> Alright, so same thing. I probably took a little bit too much insulation off the last one, but yeah. Yeah. Let's see if that yeah that's enough. Okay. Twist the wires together. Oh, that one's a bit bent and mangled, so I'm gonna have to straighten that out. 
just to make the um, insulation of the cable slip in there a bit easier. Okay, now I can get these pliers to hold it for me. Yes, probably worked just fine. Oops, not, not enough solder. Now there's enough solder. Now I just have to readjust my clamp. I don't want to go too far because the insulation is still hot. That's now sticking, oh no, it's slipping a little bit easier. That is hot. You bastard. Get on there. Get on there. Alright. Gravity. Okay, and there we have it there. Two new, well not new, but two repurposed multimeter meter probes. Okay, so with the meter on the continuity scale still, I'm going to test a new concoction of multimeter meter leads to make sure that they indeed do work. They do, but it's uh, giving us a bit of resistance. Let's try that on normal resistance. Oh, 0.2 of an ohm. Yeah, it's not that bad. So it's the same as what the probes were before. But we've got some handy dandy alligator clips. So if you ever break your multimeter probes like mine mysteriously did, don't throw them away, reuse them. Make them into helpful clippy tools. But you want to clip across a resistor and measure a resistive drop, or adjust the bias of an amplifier, or measure a DC output of an amplifier, etc. And these just plug in place of your normal um, multimeter connections. Now, these are not going to be rated at the original Cat 3 that the probes are. So if you're following along at home and you want to measure high voltage circuits with this, you do so at your own risk. I will not be held responsible for giving yourself an electric shock. So please be careful. Anyway, I'm the Astro 30 and if you enjoyed this video, please remember to rate, comment and subscribe below. And you can always follow me on Facebook and you can even support me on Patreon. The links are in the description as usual. Anyway, this is the Astro 30 saying, see ya, happy multimedia probes.